JBN, we keep you informed. Security Supervisor Popular St. James Hotel on a legal gun possession charge. The Security Supervisor for Popular Hotel in St. James has been arrested on a charge of illegal possession of firearm and ammunition on Wednesday, September 18. East Collington Campbell. Campbell was reportedly taken into custody after a car chase and an almost hour-long standoff with the police. Reports are the police were conducting an operation on the home hill main road in the parish when Campbell's BMW motor car was reportedly observed going at high speeds. Campbell's car was reportedly signaled to stop. According to reports, when Campbell was instructed to exit the vehicle, he sped off. It's alleged that after multiple attempts to escape the police, Campbell's car was eventually blocked in by members of the constabulary. After being caught by the police, Campbell reportedly locked himself in the vehicle and refused to exit. Following a 40-minute standoff, the police negotiated with Campbell for him to exit the vehicle. The vehicle was searched and a handgun with the serial number obscured was allegedly found under the driver's seat. The gun reportedly contained a loaded magazine, and an additional magazine containing 12 rounds was also found. The police are carrying out further investigations. Higler shot dead in Clarendon. Gunmen carried out a gun attack at a shop in Cocoa Peace Clarendon on Wednesday night, leaving a Higler dead. The deceased has been identified as 28-year-old Leron Tracy, alias Bebo, of Turner's district in the parish. Police reported that sometime after 7 p.m., Tracy was outside a shop when he was pounced upon by armed men. The assailants shot him several times before fleeing the area. The police were alerted, and on their arrival, the wounded eagle was seen lying in a pool of blood. He was assisted to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. A motive for the killing is yet to be established, as the police continue to probe the matter. Clarendon, which has been reeling from many brazen gun attacks since the start of the year, is currently under a state of public emergency. Baby thief nabbed in hospital. Investigators in the St. Catherine North Police Division said charges are imminent against a woman who tried to smuggle a baby from the Spanish Town Hospital. The 27-year-old was held on the maternity ward of the health facility with the baby in her arms. Security personnel, sensing something was amiss, summoned the police. When investigators arrived, the suspect was held and an initial probe revealed that the woman lied that she had just delivered a baby at the hospital. She was then taken into custody. It is alleged that the suspect befriended the baby's mother, gaining information about her, including her name. We are very concerned as to how she could have entered the institution and got the biological mother's name. We are still heartened that good sense prevailed and that she was held before stealing the innocent child, a senior investigator said. Investigations are ongoing. Gone many police uniform, commit robberies in Croftsdale, Clarendon. Member of Parliament for Northern Clarendon, Horace Daly, said men dressed in police uniform committed a number of robberies in the Croftsdale area of his constituency on Monday night, September 16. He further stated that a few days earlier, gunmen also robbed the Western Union outlet in Croftsdale. Men posing as cops stole a 2014 Toyota Axi motor car from a man's house in the Lordlow district. The police report that it is alleged that one of the men requested the keys for the motor vehicle after searching the complainant's home. A state of emergency SOE has been in effect in Croftsdale and other areas of Clarendon as well as the entire parish of St. Catherine since September 5. The House of Representatives on Tuesday approved a one-month extension to the SOE until October 19. Daly, during a debate regarding the SOE extension, lamented that law enforcers in and around Croftsdale have not received additional resources. He noted that criminals tend to migrate from areas where the security forces have beefed up their presence to other places where there is a shortage of resources. Croftsdale and other parts of Clarendon Northern, Daly further reasoned, are usually peaceful. Sometimes for the entire year, there is not one murder in Northern Clarendon. From Chapleton, go up there. I mean, you still have to buy the one in steel to make the burglar bar, but it's relatively peaceful people. They go to court for land and go to court for little things, but they are not murderers, Dali further said. St. Anne Principal's bail extended on charge of fondling male student. The principal of Brownstone Primary School who was charged in July with indecent assault involving a male teenager of another school had his bail extended when he appeared in the St. Anne Parish Court on Wednesday. The 39-year-old accused, Solomon Smith, was offered bail in the sum of $600,000 when he first appeared in court on July 10. In court on Wednesday, Smith, a resident of St. Anne's Bay in the parish, was ordered to return to court on January 24, 2020. 
The allegations are that on April 17, the complainant, a 17-year-old high school student, missed his private bus to school and made contact with the principal, who is a family friend, to facilitate a ride to the student's school. Reports are that during the journey to Brownstown, the now-accused man fondled the breast of the male teen and placed his hands in his boxers and fondled his sexual organ. The teen told his parents of the incident some weeks later, after reportedly telling his friends that he was depressed. A report was subsequently made to the police and following a probe, officers attached to the Center for Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse Sissoka arrested the educator and later charged him. During his bail hearing in July, Simmons' attorney said his client has denied the allegations that have been laid against him. Most wanted men surrender in eastern Kingston. The Kingston Eastern Police have confirmed that Dwayne Willis and Jalani Green were earlier this week listed among most wanted men for murders that have been committed in the division turned themselves in on Wednesday, September 18. Reports are that Willis and Green were accompanied by their individual attorneys when they surrendered to the police. The police are urging two other men who are still listed as most wanted in the division to also turn themselves in. They are 23-year-old Sadiq Menze, otherwise called Preps of Graham Street, Kingston, 51-year-old Dean Cook, otherwise called Booby, of McIntyre Villa, Kingston. The authorities are also urging anyone who may be able to help the police to locate the wanted men to contact investigators at the Elliston Road Police Station at 876-928-4200, Crime Stopper 311, the Police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. Persons are also being reminded that it is an offense to harbor a criminal. Sentencing of Victoria Jubilee Baby Snatcher Pushback Yesterday's sentencing of the woman who pleaded guilty to the abduction of a day-old baby from the Victoria Jubilee Hospital in Kingston had to be pushed back because of the unavailability of the judge. The hearing was subsequently rescheduled for October 3. 28-year-old Peter Gay French, who was charged with child stealing, was further remanded. French was charged after Suzette White, the baby's mother, reported that her child was abducted while she went to use the bathroom at the corporate area maternity hospital in January. A month later, French was arrested when she attempted to register the child. He was subsequently returned to his parents after a DNA test confirmed his identity. As to spend $11 billion to establish farm on Bernard Lodge lands. Businessman Gassan Hassan is to unveil plans today to invest more than $11 billion to create a state-of-the-art agriculture development on 400 acres in the Lakespen area of the Bernard Lodge lands in St. Catherine. In a preview yesterday, Azan said that the deficiencies in the supply of agricultural produce to his Megamart stores prompted him to start looking at methods to ensure a regular supply line through direct linkages with farmers. When I started looking into it deeper, I realized that I wanted to go further than just linkages with the farmers. So instead of being our own middleman, we decided to actually engage in farming, but farming at a different level, much more high-tech than has ever been done in Jamaica, said Azan. He said his team looked at what has been done in the Dominican Republic, where high-tech farming is par for the course. Then we started talking to people and realizing that this thing could actually happen where we go from supplying ourselves, we become wholesale suppliers to the nation, to the hotels, and then the export market, added Azan. We decided that we have to start looking at markets outside of Jamaica within six months because we are going to be producing so much. How we are going to be producing so much is because the technology that we will be using is an average of 10 to 1 yields compared to open farming. It is going to be greenhouse, shade house, hydroponic house, open field, and orchards. So it's going to be a combination of five different types of farming, declared Aslan. He pointed out that discussions on the project started in 2014 with the previous administration, while the proposal was submitted to cabinet in 2016, long before the controversial Bernard Lodge development master plan was put on the table. According to Azan, the plan is to employ 1,000 people in phase one of the project, which will cost $9 billion, with an additional 350 individuals being employed in phase two, which is budgeted at $2.2 billion. He said the assembly of the greenhouses will start in November, but before that, his group will establish a collection point or a mother farm type operation by October, where small farmers in the area will be contracted to supply produce. 
but it will be more than buying from them. We'll be helping them and telling them how to operate along the way, said Azan. We'll provide further details on the project dubbed Lake Spen AgriVenture during a media briefing in New Kingston. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.